I forget my role. Yeah. <laughs> Chief troublemaker, right? <laughs> I am Nonette Royo. I am the executive director of the Tenure Facility. Our organization works with indigenous peoples and local communities to get their land rights recognized. I'm Nicole Rycroft. I'm Canopy's founder and executive director. And we work to protect forest ecosystems around the world by transforming unsustainable supply chains. So from what I know about your work, Nonette, one of the things that I find most inspiring is that, you know, so much of the world's biodiversity and climate critical forests are actually under the stewardship of indigenous communities and peoples. Um, and so your work that's really focused on lifting uh, the voices and the rights of these peoples and communities that have often been lost through colonization and, and kind of the modern day economy. It's such powerful and important work for not just those communities, um, but for all of us and for planetary stability. So I find that work very deep um, and super inspiring. Thank you, Nicole. Uh -huh. And what really inspires me of your work is I feel very uh, supported. There is just this power of uh, connectivity of our work. You, because of what you do, are helping protect ancient forests and endangered forests, the very forests that we are protecting with land rights. And it makes it much more arguable for those from the outside in the market to see this makes sense. There are alternatives, we can do this. That is very powerful for me and very inspiring. Right. Less than 2% of philanthropic support still goes into the climate space. Given that the climate crisis is recognized as like the existential crisis of our generation, alongside of the biodiversity uh, crisis, I would say, it's astounding that we don't have more money, uh, more yeah. philanthropic money moving into the climate space. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I would say, you know, that we need still larger amounts of philanthropy within yep. the climate space. We need it over kind of longer periods of time, multi-year support, yep. um, as well as allowing for dexterity because, you know, we need to be nimble and, mm -hmm. and agile and pivoting as we navigate these new paths forward. Yes, and it is really that space. It's opening uh, the opportunity for people who th we think uh, do not have anything to actually shine and say, actually, we have land, we have practices, right. we have traditional knowledge, we have innovation, and that can be funded too. Well, and I think also there's uh, different forms of financing as well, mm -hmm. right? Like there's philanthropy, um, but also be it in terms of the building of, and yes. supporting of conservation-based economies, mm -hmm. uh, or be it in investing in these new low carbon uh, supply chains, we need to see a massive mobilization of, of private capital, right? Like investment mm -hmm. uh, where there will be financial returns but also obviously yes. significant social returns. Working to mitigate and stop climate change, it can be, I mean, it can be challenging work um, and it can be disheartening at times. Uh, and the audacious community, the TED community, um, you know, be it the other uh, audacious recipients as well as the broader uh, audacious and TED community, it's, it's like a safe harbor. Um, you can come in with really kind of bold aspirational ideas and uh, you're not dismissed. Uh, you're not kind of like, there's no trying to talk you down off the ledge. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, people are coming up uh, mm -hmm. to meet you and support you. How can that be financed? Mm -hmm. How could we kind of co-create and kind of move that perhaps even to another level? Uh, and I think that generosity and spirit um, is incredibly important for all of us that are, that are working in this space. Yes, exactly. And there's abundance and we don't have to keep destroying. Go figure, we're smarter than cutting down 400 year old trees to make pizza boxes and t-shirts. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>